Have you ever wondered why we're all so obsessed with colonizing Mars? Mars this, Mars that. It's like the universe only gave us one red rock to dream about. But what if we turned our sights to a planet that's a little closer, a little different, and a whole lot more challenging? What if we colonized Venus instead? Sure, Venus might have a reputation for being a fiery hellscape with temperatures that can melt lead and an atmosphere that could crush you like a tin can, but hear me out. There are some pretty interesting reasons why Venus might actually be a better place for us to set up shop. Why stick to Mars when Venus is sitting right there, just waiting for us to figure out how to tame it? So buckle up, because today we're taking a trip to the second planet from the Sun. By the end of this video, you might just be asking yourself, why didn't we think of this sooner? Let's start with some basics. Venus is often called Earth's sister planet because, on paper, it's surprisingly similar to our own home. It's about the same size, has a rocky surface, and its gravity is roughly 90% of Earth's. So, you know, you won't be floating around like you're on the Moon or Mars. No need to worry about your bones deteriorating or losing muscle mass as you bounce around at a third of the weight you're used to. In terms of gravity, Venus is a pretty sweet deal. But then there's the tricky stuff. Venus's surface temperature is hotter than an oven cranked up to full blast, around 900 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's not the only problem. The atmosphere? It's thick, super thick. We're talking 90 times the pressure of Earth's atmosphere, like being 3,000 feet underwater. So, stepping onto the surface of Venus wouldn't be a pleasant walk in the park. It'd be more like being dunked in a deep fryer while simultaneously having a sumo wrestler sit on you. But here's where it gets interesting. We don't need to live on the surface of Venus. Nope. Instead, we could float above it. That's right. Imagine entire cities suspended in the clouds. Venus's atmosphere at about 30 miles up is a lot more manageable. It's still crazy don't get me wrong, but temperatures are much more bearable, around 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And the atmospheric pressure is about the same as Earth's. It's almost like Venus is offering us a hidden sweet spot, a layer where we could potentially thrive. This might sound a little out there, but NASA has actually considered it. They've toyed with the idea of sending giant floating cities to Venus. These cities could be filled with breathable air, so no need to constantly wear spacesuits and could hover in the atmosphere using good old-fashioned physics. In fact, the air inside these habitats would be lighter than Venus's carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere, keeping them afloat like helium balloons. But before you start packing your bags for Venus, there's a catch. Venus's atmosphere is mostly made up of carbon dioxide with clouds of sulfuric acid. Yep, acid rain. You thought Earth had bad weather? On Venus, it's literally raining acid from the sky. So, while floating cities sound cool, we'd need to build them out of some seriously strong corrosion-resistant materials. Otherwise, we'd be living in constant fear of our floating city springing a leak and dropping us into the inferno below. And let's not forget the winds. Venus's atmosphere has winds that whip around the planet at over 200 miles per hour. These winds could give our floating cities a pretty wild ride. Think roller coaster, but every day, all day. While it's possible to counteract the winds with advanced technology, it's not exactly the calm, peaceful environment we'd hope for in a future colony. Now, I know what you're thinking. This sounds insane. Why would we ever choose Venus when Mars is sitting there with its calm, dusty surface and nice, quiet atmosphere? Well, that's the million dollar question. Mars might seem like the easier option, but Venus has some big advantages. For one, Venus is a lot closer. A trip to Venus would take just about four months, while a trip to Mars could take up to nine months or more. Think about that. If we ever needed to send supplies or even get people back to Earth in an emergency, Venus would be much more convenient. Another advantage? Venus has way more solar power potential. Its proximity to the sun means we could harness a ton of solar energy far more than on Mars. On Mars, solar panels would need to be huge to gather enough energy because of the planet's distance from the sun and its dusty atmosphere. On Venus, we'd have access to a nearly endless supply of clean, renewable energy. If we can figure out how to shield our solar panels from that pesky sulfuric acid, of course. And let's not forget gravity. Like I mentioned earlier, Venus's gravity is close to Earth's. 
This could have a huge impact on the long-term health of colonists. Mars's gravity is only about 38% of Earth's, which could cause serious health problems over time. Scientists are still still figuring out how long-term exposure to low gravity affects the human body. But some of the possible issues include muscle atrophy, bone loss, and even changes to your eyes and brain. Venus, with its Earth-like gravity, could be a much better option for keeping our bodies in tip-top shape. Now, before we continue with our video, if you're enjoying this so far, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more mind-bending content like this. We've got plenty more space adventures and what-if scenarios coming your way. Okay, back to the video. Even with all of these advantages, Venus still has its fair share of challenges. The biggest problem is that we simply don't know as much about Venus as we do about Mars. Mars has been the golden child of planetary exploration for decades. We've sent rovers, satellites, and even landers to study the red planet up close. Meanwhile, Venus has been largely ignored. The last time we sent a spacecraft to Venus was back in the 1980s, and it didn't last long. Venus's harsh conditions make it extremely difficult to send anything there that can survive for more than a few hours. But if we shifted our focus and our funding, we could change that. New technology, new spacecraft, and new research could open up Venus to exploration. If we're serious about colonizing another planet, Venus should be in the conversation. Mars might be easier to land on, but Venus offers some tantalizing possibilities if we're willing to put in the work. So, why aren't we rushing to Venus? Well, the truth is that space exploration is expensive, and Mars has been marketed as the next frontier for so long that it's hard to change course. There's also the public perception issue. People just don't think of Venus as a place we could live. It's been cast as the villain in the solar system, with its scorching temperatures and acid clouds. But that perception could change with the right investment and the right science. Ultimately, the question of whether we should colonize Venus instead of Mars comes down to what kind of future we want. Do we want a colony on Mars with its quiet, barren landscapes and long trips back to Earth? Or do we want to build floating cities in the clouds of Venus, living in a place that's a bit more dangerous, but also a bit more like home? It's a question we'll have to answer as we continue to push the boundaries of space exploration. One thing's for sure, though. Venus is worth a second look. It may not be the first planet that comes to mind when we think of colonization, but it might just be the one that surprises us all. And with that, we wrap up our cosmic journey to Venus. But before we sign off, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like this video. We've got plenty more what-if scenarios, space mysteries, and futuristic ideas coming your way. Thanks for watching.